guys, what's going on? I'm Rich, welcome back to the channel. We're gonna be doing a day in life video. So as you can see, I start off my day by waking up and the time is around 8.44 in the morning, so. So just like in a lot of my day in the life iPhone videos, I'm gonna wait for this iPhone to get to around 100% battery. I think it's around 98 right now. Once that is done, I'm gonna unplug it, take you through day in the life video with this great, terrific iPhone. Now, I actually like this iPhone a lot, uh, especially now since the iPhone SE 3 came out just a few months ago. The prices of the iPhone 11 is dropping as we speak. And you can pick this phone up for as low as like 350 bucks if you buy it new. If you buy it new from the Apple website, it's gonna run you around $499. I really think this is the iPhone that a lot of people should have. It was a great improvement when I upgraded from my iPhone 7 Plus coming from a home button to iPhone like this. It wouldn't be as expensive as the newest iPhone 12 and the 13 and you wouldn't get all the latest and greatest features. But the iPhone 11 definitely does have a lot of great features which I think many people, if you're tech savvy, if you're not, will still appreciate because this is a great all around phone and I will not stress this enough throughout the video. So with that being said, let's get on to how my day is going and I'll take you through a battery and camera test of it. Starting now. So one of the greatest things about the iPhone 11 and just most iPhone in general is that, is that this is gonna have an IP68 water resistant rating, which means that you can get it a little bit wet. I don't mind taking this into the bathroom with me or in the shower. As you can tell, the iPhone just has a little bit of water into it. I also don't mind taking like a Lysol wipe and giving it like a small wipe every so often just to get those extra germs and get that oily, greasy feeling off of my iPhone. Definitely a safe practice to do with any phone in general. Obviously now, you know, don't expose it to liquids all the time. Don't dump it in a bucket full of water. Stay away from any sugars, coffee, or spilling, you know, any sort of drinks on it. As long as you stick to water, it has a few couple splashes here and there, it's okay. All right, so now I'm gonna switch to some clips of me recording on the iPhone 11. Hope you guys enjoy. So here's a back camera on the 11. I'm gonna be taking my electric longboard out today. This is definitely gonna help me get to the library very, very quickly. So it's such a great day outside right now. For the past several days, we've been getting cold weather up here in Pennsylvania. I've just been freezing, putting on jackets, but this is probably the first day I can go out with just shorts and a shirt. Right now I'm gonna head to the library, maybe pick up a drink or something because I gotta get studying for my finals. Also, here's a look at the ultra wide camera on this. Uh, I'm really digging it for just under $500. You get a nice 1080p camera, capturing me everywhere. I'm also using the back camera right now. Really digging the camera so far, but yeah, let me know down in the comments what you think. But I actually had to take a quick pit stop because my friend just called me about some questions about the study guide review for one of our classes. So, you know, I can't leave him stranded. All right, and uh, yeah, I'll talk to you soon, bro. Okay, yeah, see you, peace. Uh, okay, that was like a 15 minute phone call with my friends. We we're just talking about schoolwork. You know, I might as well tell you how the calling feature is now here too. I really don't know how to make a video on the day in the life review, but I'll just tell you some good things about this phone. Calling feature is really well on it. Sound quality is really great. A lot of my friends told me that when I upgraded from my old iPhone, um, they said the mic quality wasn't loud and clear, but then when I switched over to the 11, they said the microphone quality was like, really, really nice. I could hear all my words really clear. But taking a quick glance at the iPhone 11's design, I really don't think this is outdated in any way. A phone that was released back in 2019 still looks as premium as ever. With an all Gorilla Glass build, it's rocking that beautiful 6.1 inch liquid retina display with True Tone technology. The screen on this iPhone does not disappoint and it still holds up super well with most modern smartphones today at that price point. I still think the colors look very nice and vibrant on here and yes, it may not feature the same ProMotion technology that you would find on the iPhone 13. I think the 11 does a great job at offering a great general display that looks soft to the eye and bright enough to see at all viewing angles, you know? I have no complaints with it at all. The 11 fits ergonomically in one hand and even if you put an extra case on it, uh, it doesn't get too bulky, you know? I can still reach all four corners of the screen comfortably and I can text with one hand, so you know, that's very cool. As far as the performance and usability, 
capability goes, the iPhone 11 comes with Apple's A13 Bionic chip, which is still very, very capable of handling demanding day-to-day -day tasks. You get six cores in the CPU, two of which are high performance, and the other four are efficiency cores. And you know this keeps the iPhone, you know, to save battery when it needs to when you're doing stuff that isn't too intense. And when you are doing some more demanding tasks on here, the two high performance cores will kick in and give you that extra boost to make everything on this phone feel very, very smooth. So you know, if you can see right here, anything from scrolling across the UI looks very fluid. Opening and exiting out of the apps is buttery smooth. Playing games, FaceTiming friends, and just the overall speed of the device is great. It doesn't lag, and while it may not be extremely fast as the new iPhone 13 and SE 2022, I think the iPhone 11 falls a little short compared to those phones, but again, it's nowhere near a deal breaker. This phone is powerful. I can text very, very fast on this. I can scroll out. I can you know, send GIFs, images. I can do all those sorts of things and do it without feeling burdened by the hardware, something of which I felt a lot was holding me back on my iPhone 7 Plus. to find a pretty quiet space here. I'm gonna set up my laptop and get my notes out so I can look over the material and start studying like a good student. As you can see, I'm working on finishing out my own study guide for an exam I have to take tomorrow. So I'm going back and forth through my phone to copy my notes onto my MacBook and some of my friends were texting me as well. Uh, you know, there's times to goof off here and there, so I'm taking a little break when I can now. I'm actually using my phone scanning feature tool pretty often, so I scan documents, PDFs, homeworks, notes, and more. Uh, this saves me the trouble of going to an actual scanner because I can do everything on here. So I'm scanning my homework right now and transferring that over to my MacBook to send to my friends so they can see a nice note. I also do have to submit some other notes for my homework assignments, so very, very useful feature. All right, so after using this phone for about an hour and 58 minutes, right there, I just put a little case on it just to make sure that I don't drop my phone throughout the day. We are at 84% battery. Most of my usage came down from Google Chrome, Safari, uh, texting to my friends, and a lot of video recording. I mean, you saw a few clips there. So as you can tell, that's around two hours of usage, and we just subtracted around 15%. Uh, that's actually really great. But right now, I'm actually gonna go pack up my things and head back home. Probably gonna go cook some food and relax for a little bit. Your boy has to take a few more phone calls before he leaves because right after this, I'm going to get some great night footage clips for you guys so you can see how this phone performs. All right, so the rear camera is very impressive. It's rocking two in the back, one for the regular wide angle f1.8 lens that's great at capturing sharp photos. It works extremely well in darker situations, giving more light to subjects that may seem darker in reality. Unfortunately, there is no night mode here uh, as compared to the iPhone 13. You know, obviously we can't be too disappointed because the technology, uh, I guess, wasn't released for this phone yet. But um, there's also the second ultra wide f2.4 lens with the 120 degree field of view. And let me tell you guys, this is by far my favorite lens ever. I can't stop using it. Whenever I'm hanging out with my friends, maybe I want to post something on my Instagram story, take really nice and open pictures. The ultra wide lens makes it so much easier to see your surroundings because of that higher field of view. Now, of course, it's not as perfect as you can see here. The phone has a little bit of vignetting on the corners. Like you can see, it gets kind of dark around the edges of the pictures. And earlier when I was riding my skateboard, you can see that my arm looked uh, a little bit you know, skinny and weird. But um, anyways, let's take a look at an uh, example portrait shot in this device. We got a fine gentleman here posing on the skateboard. And this photo is without the portrait shot. Uh, and this is with the portrait shot. As you can tell, the portrait mode isn't the best in my opinion. You know, Apple's AI seems to get a little bit skeptic, especially when it comes to the hair. It's not the best, you know, digitally mapping out the face, but if you want the extra blur for some of your photos, the 11 is not too shabby. All right, so I'm taking a quick break and trying to get some more footage of the iPhone 11. My friend, he's taking the skateboard out for a spin. But yeah, let's take a quick battery check too. I have been using it for two hours and 30 minutes. We are sitting at around 70% battery. Um, didn't really deplete that much. And Face ID is wonderful on here. I use it every time to unlock my iPhone. It is snappy. I used it many times to purchase things through Apple Pay, which requires Face ID. Uh, Apple definitely polished this feature over the years and it just worked really well in the dark too, as you can tell. Uh, Face ID is just very, very convenient.
All right, look at that. This is some chicken alfredo I made this morning. I like eating a lot of carbs. It really keeps me energized throughout the day and the next day. Mm. Mm. So I think for the rest of the night, I'm just gonna lay low. It's around 8.50 p.m. right now. I'm gonna hop on <laughs> Fortnite with some of my friends and just play a little bit. Gotta have time and like chill out here and there. I've been doing a lot of studying today, so I think this is a well-deserved break. I think the rest of the night, I'll just be, you know, playing, I'll use my phone to check and call up my friends here and there, you know, typical social media things, you know, see what's going on. I think in the next few hours, the battery won't drain too much. I am sitting at 62 battery health right now, so hey, for a whole day in usage, um, minus 28%, that's really good. So in conclusion, I had a pretty busy day today. Uh, much of it was just me trying to study and kind of show you how the iPhone 11 is doing after two years. And you know, it's a solid device. It has just the right amount of everything, you know, from the screen size being right in the middle. Uh, the display isn't HDR, not 1080p, but it's certainly good enough uh, when you look at it from all viewing angles. It's essentially got the same hardware inside of the 2020 iPhone SE. So it's very, very quick even till today. I haven't had any slowdowns or lag spikes while I'm using it. The camera is great. You get all the same functionality, including 4K video recording. Unfortunately, I did not get any 4K clips for you guys because that is taking up a lot of space on here. But you do get live photos, portrait mode, and the ability to use the ultra wide angle camera. So no matter what level of your photography skills are, there's something for everyone. If you're on the iPhone upgrade program and don't need the features of the Pro models, the 11 is a great choice. It offers most of the same specs other than the camera at a nice price point. If you're upgrading from an older phone from like a 7, an 8, a 10 or something, you won't be disappointed as the changes in the past couple years add up to a much more powerful iPhone. So it's definitely going to last a long time, but let me know in the comments what you think. Is this a phone that you're looking at getting at? Do you already have this iPhone? Uh, maybe you're looking at upgrading? Uh, you know, let me know. Like I said, since the price of the iPhone 11 is dropping a lot, I would recommend this to everyone. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. Hit that subscribe button, please, as it really helps the channel out a lot. And I will see you in the next video.